Dear friends and colleagues, thank you for inviting me to send this message of support. As we commemorate the 11th anniversary of the 18th of May, I and my colleagues at the International Truth and Justice Project would like to pay tribute to the tens of thousands of victims who lost their lives during the final phase of the war. We would also like to extend our condolences to the survivors and families of the missing and the disappeared. We find it absolutely outrageous that so many years after the conflict has ended, we are unable as yet to put a final number to those who lost their lives. In the last few years, we have seen the mothers of the disappeared at great risk to themselves protest and continue to demand answers from the authorities as well as the Office of Missing Persons as to the fate and whereabouts of their loved ones. Despite their entreaties, the Sri Lankan government and the security forces have continued to deny any involvement in the enforced disappearance of those who surrendered into their custody. Here at the ITJP, our mission is not only to document the stories of the survivors, but also to collect and preserve evidence of war crimes and crimes against humanity, so that one day in the future, we can hold those responsible accountable. We have, of course, in the last five years, continued to use the evidence in our possession to name and shame those most responsible for the killings and to ensure that we are able, where possible, to prosecute them under universal jurisdiction. We have succeeded in ensuring that some of them are not able to travel or to serve in UN peacekeeping missions. We have also put the international community on notice that since Gotabaya Rajapaksa assumed the presidency of, in Sri Lanka, that he has surrounded himself with military officials who are implicated in war crimes and crimes against humanity, as well as fraud and corruption. Some observers have called this the normalization of military influence in the civilian sphere as informal networks become formal under this regime. This is, of course, a stark reminder to those who continue to do business with this government that they should not be surprised that under the guise of COVID-19, violations continue with members of minority communities, particularly Tamils and Muslims, targeted and persecuted. While justice for these crimes may take a long time, I ask that you don't lose faith and that all of us remain committed to the cause of truth recovery and justice. It is imperative that we continue to tell the story of those who lost their lives so that their deaths will not have been in vain. I thank you.